attitudes on folk. Oh, you here? I feel you in this place. That ain't got nothing to do with you and God. Come on, give God some praise. The reason why you like you are is because of you and your place in God. David said, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgression. He went into repentance. Yes, yes. If you want to get in the presence, you're going to have to repent. Yeah. Repent means to turn from it. You can't receive that spirit every time that spirit comes and still didn't go in prayer. You hypocrites! I'm preaching under the Lord that I can't help it. God, I need you to restore me. As soon as that spirit comes to try you, tell you this, that. You, you go right into it. Then your hypocrite spirit turn around and you go back to God. Jeez, jeez, help me. Lord, you know, God, I need you to tell me. God ain't listening to you. You need to repent. I don't care if you don't like me. Somebody need to preach the truth around here. You need to say, God, I'm nasty. I'm filthy because I, I need to get in your presence. See, that's how you're going to get in, is when you just be honest about yourself and quit throwing people and things and places you've been in in that equation because when you're down there, they have nothing to do with you and God. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> David understood that. So David went into repentance. He said, wash me. I need to be restored. I need to get my spirit right. He didn't let being the king. Some of us going to let our titles take us to hell. Oh, y'all want me to tell you the truth. I'm this. I'm that. You think God cares about that? You need to come off that title kick. Who is he talking to me like that? The Holy Ghost talking to you like that. You don't got above him? Oh, I feel you're in here. Come off your title and get before God. Come on, give God some praise. The refreshing will come. Come on, give God some praise. I got to close, but I ran a little bit late today because I stopped at the church. God, see, God had assignment. And I had bought this, this, there was this choice piece of furniture that matched my office perfectly, Bishop. So I got it. I was like, oh man. I said, I'm going to get this. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to read over this word and pray. Most of the time I'm at a point now, I read over the word and then I just pray. And let God put it in the way. So, me and the, my armor bearer, he's on the drums there. I said, come on, I'm not going to break my back now. I need you to come and get this out. He said, I'll be right there, Apostle. He came, got out. As I was walking out, we opened the door, got in the door. This preacher come running in behind me. Grab my shirt. Apostle, I need prayer right now. Nobody in my fellowship. He's a prophet. A sharp prophet. Very sharp in the word gospel. He said, God sent me over here. I need you to deal with me. I said, you really want me to deal with you? I said, right now, I've really been consecrated for the last few weeks. I'm, I'm under prayer. I said, I don't know what's going to come out. He said, he said, whatever it takes. Once he said that, my spirit was open. Because I was tired. I ain't got time to waste. I got to get to Chicago. I don't know what the traffic going to be like. But when he said, whatever it takes, I said, let's go, to, let's go up to the sanctuary because we had came through the back where my in the basement where my office is. I said, let's go upstairs. We went upstairs. And the first thing I did was try the spirit. See, some, you, if you ain't careful, people can waste your time. You sitting there counseling and talking to them. They don't even want it. They just, they just want to spew out at you what hurt them and what's on their mind. They really don't want deliverance. They want to get something across to you. So, first thing I did, I said, now I tried the spirit. He began to talk. I listened to talk, talk. I said, are you here for pity? All 
I said, because I don't have nothing for you. I said, are you here for a word or are you here for pity? I said, I'm listening to you. Are you here for pity? Is that, is that what you're here for? He said, no, sir. He said, I want deliverance. I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed with my ministry. I'm disappointed with my call. I'm disappointed with my marriage. I'm disappointed with my home. I'm disappointed with my relationship. He said, I'm just jacked. I said, are you going to listen to what I got to say? He said, yes, sir. I said, you need to repent. I said, stop playing the blame game. I said, you're bitter. I said, you're wicked. He didn't say, I'm a prophet. I'm known. Why you talk to me like that? Tears started rolling down his eyes. You were there. I said, he says, I haven't been able to get the breakthrough I need with God. He says, I have no zeal. I said, God, you are confirming my word. I'm sitting in my mind saying, you're confirming my word tonight. I said, because you give me a hard word tonight. You didn't give me one of them joy messages so all y'all can shout and say, oh, that's a great preacher. You gave me a word of deliverance tonight. And I'm sitting here saying, you're confirming it. And I said, Start repenting. I said, forget what other people have done. I want to, we don't, we don't want, we're not going to talk about what your daddy did. We don't talk about what your brother in the gospel did. Let's talk about what you did. You said you want to get back to the place. I said, that's what you said. Yeah. I said, so this is about you and God. I said, right there, start repenting. He started repenting right there. His spirit was right. As he started repenting, stuff began to come up. He let out a scream, threw his hands up, and let out a scream, was shaking violently. And then the enemy tried to, you know how he catch that cry, that plea, when he, when he don't want to come out? Try to show me. I said, you have no more ground now. I didn't scream. You know, some folks scream all over folks. I, I just spoke to him. I said, you have no more ground. Loose him and let him go. The next thing you know, the scream came out. And I mean scream, tears came. Deliverance come. The next thing you know, tears started flowing. See, see, you got to get in this presence. You're not going to be refreshed with this crap you're doing. All this fake and phony stuff. You're going to have to get real. Some of us are ministering full of crap. Come on, saints. He started screaming. Ha, ha, ha. And then the tears started flowing. And next thing I heard, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We both started rejoicing. Tears flowing out of my eyes. Tears flowing out of his eyes. We rejoice. Him hollering, I'm, I'm, I'm delivered. I can't believe this. I can't believe it. I said, son, it could have happened a long time ago. I said, you knew how to get in this presence. You knew what you needed to do. It could have been happened. And he just laid there and cried. And I took my time. I said, well, Lord, I'll get there enough time to preach. I'll get there, Lord. And we prayed for him. He got me. He said, I feel so much better. He said, I'm free. I'm telling you what he said. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm free. I'm, I'm free. God has broken this thing. He said, now I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do ministry. And we praise God right there. He walked out of there a free man. You can be a free person today. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on, give him praise right now. Would you rest on your feet just for a minute?